Hey guys, it's Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA, and today we're going over how the 2022 Dependent Care FSA affects the Child Independent Care tax credit and which route is more beneficial. Stay tuned. All right, let's get right into it. The way that the Dependent Care FSA affects the Child Independent Care tax credit is that it reduces the amount that is eligible for the child independent care tax credit. Now we're talking about the child dependent care tax credit, not the child tax credit. These two are different. The child dependent care credit is for essentially, it's like daycare, preschool, after school, summer school type things. Okay. For your kids. Whereas the child tax credit is strictly just for having your kid on your tax return, claiming them as a dependent. Okay. And to our second point here about our video is which one's more beneficial. Generally speaking for 2022, the dependent care FSA is more beneficial than strictly just taking the child and dependent care tax credit. All right. To illustrate how this stuff works, we're going to take a look at my lovely spreadsheet here. Okay. Um, all right. So again, we're talking 2022. How does this work? Okay. The max that we can contribute to dependent care FSA is 5,000 for these, uh, filing statuses, single head of household or married filing jointly for filing separately, married filing separate. It's right. Half of that. They penalize us as with everything, married filing separate. And then the child and dependent care tax credit the max amount that we can uh, apply towards the credit, right, is dependent upon how many kids we have. One is 3000 uh, or if you have two or more that you're paying for daycare expenses is 6000 Okay, and to see how this stuff works, okay, if we use the FSA, how does it affect that? Um, let's say we max that, let, okay, again, some givens here 120,000 is gross income on this example here taxable is 94 let's say we max out the the FSA at 5000 okay and the way this works is that we multiply the amount that you contribute to that by your tax rates okay and in California we also get to use that as well so let's say for this income it's 22% tax bracket California we got an 8% roughly tax bracket there so there's our tax savings on that 5000 just the FSA but since we can contribute up to 6,000 towards the dependent care tax credit, right? And we already contributed 5,000 to the FSA. What we do is we minus the five out of the six. So we now have $1,000 left over for the child dependent care tax credit. And we're gonna multiply that by 20%. Uh, this is just a given. If you earn over about $43,000, 45-ish, somewhere around there, um, then it's 20%, right? We're at 120, we're way over that. So um, it's that $1,000 times the 20% is the 200. So if we did this route, contribute to FSA, max it out, paid over 6,000 for childcare, right? The 16, then our savings by doing this route is 1,700 bucks, all that right there. Now, if we didn't do the FSA and we strictly just did the tax credit, it's the $6,000, the max that we can apply towards, uh, apply towards the credit times the 20% is $1,200. If we didn't do the FSA, you're missing out on 500 bucks here, the difference between these two, okay? And that's why in this example, it is more beneficial to do the FSA versus just the, the credit there. Now, obviously the FSA is dependent upon the credit or the tax bracket that you're in. So the lower the tax bracket, the more it uh, makes sense to do the tax credit instead of the FSA. And I'm going to show you an example. So income goes down. It went from 120 to 50. Okay. Tax brackets went down. You'll see these numbers changed, right? Same, everything else is the same. The 5,000 towards the FSA, 600 is the 12% of the 5,000, and then 2.2%, right? So, And then we got the $1,000 left at the 20% because we're still over the $45,000 um, for that. Okay, so there's our tax savings by doing the FSA. Now, if we strictly just did the, the tax credit, right? 6,000 times the 20%, look at that. If we did the FSA, you're losing out on 300 bucks. But most 
Uh, I'd say uh, most of the clients that I see that utilize the FSA, they have higher incomes, so it makes more sense to do the FSA. And that's why I say, generally speaking, it does make more sense to do the FSA uh, because you'll you'll end up in a situation like this more likely than not, especially if you're paying for daycare, you're probably earning um, a higher income. As the income goes up, the tax savings goes up with the FSA, whereas the dependent care tax credits kind of stay the same at the, you know, the $1,200. It is what it is. All right. And this is how it looks like on the 2441, the form you have to fill out to get the tax credit. Okay. Um, and you'll notice, right, it does say 2020. I know that. Um, and we are going over the 2022 um, in this video. Um, but and, and the reason why I'm using the 2020 version is number one, 2022 is not available yet for the 2441. Um, but also I'm not using the 2021 version of this because that was, I say, a COVID special year. And the rules were a lot different in terms of like the max amount that you can contribute and the rate at which the credit was figured. It was a 50% instead of 20%. Um, so that's why I'm using 2020 because the rules reverted back to 2020 rules for 2022. 21 was a special year. It was a one-off year for that. Okay, so let's say um, we have the example where we, you know, contributed to the FSA the 5,000 bucks. We max it out. So let's say we spent 6,000 total on daycare. We do the 6,000 minus the five, right? So we have $1,000 left over. Now that $1,000 gets hit with the 20%. There's where that 200 comes into play. Okay, that's how this works here, okay? Well, I hope the video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please help me out by sh hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel if you wanna see any more tax videos somewhat like this. And uh, if you have any other you know, requests for videos or questions about tax, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. Thank you so much, guys.